are listening to Phantom Family Chats. I'm your host tonight, Bethany, and I'm so excited to be joined by my co-host, Amanda. Hello. And Maureen. hey And it is a Gilmore Girls episode tonight. Woo! Woo. So excited. Tonight's topic, we are talking about Lorelai and her men. Wow. Mm -hmm. So pretty cool topic. We're going to be focusing more on five. We're going to start out talking about Christopher. We're going to move through Max, Alex, Jason, and of course, I think a fan favorite, at least my favorite, is Luke. (laughs) So we're going to talk about that. We have some fun honorable mentions as well. So I'm so excited about tonight's episode. (laughs) Let's get in it. Let's do this thing. So Christopher was obviously her first love. And I would just say they loved each other in in the way that young love can be sustained. Absolutely. I mean, at the age group that they were at, I think they truly did love each other. It just at 16, you know, it's a different world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. It's a, it's a different type of love. Mm-hmm. Especially mm-hmm. when you're each other's first everything. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. I mean, you're, you're tied to that person no matter what. And obviously in their case, because they had a child, they will never be out of each other's lives. So they're always there. There's always that, that fallback. There's always that safety net. There's always that sense of belonging with that person because they were your first in every way. Yeah, absolutely. You know, for being so young and then having a life of then is having the child together and in any circumstance, as you said, their, uh, their lives are tied together forever, but to have it happen at the age of 16, definitely. I mean, you know, Rory is always, you know, going to have her parents in her life in some capacity. So there's always that tie between them. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing with Christopher too, is that although they, I don't think Lorelai really ever, I think she loved him in the sense that he was her first everything, but even the flashbacks we get with them, like there's that one scene where she comes in and she's like, mom, we're home home I'm gonna take my shoes off mom I'm home and I'm gonna leave my stuff on the floor like you know she's doing that it's every back or every flashback we get of them together it seems like she's more interested in irritating her parents than actually loving Christopher and I think that I think she loves him out of circumstance and I think she loves him because he freed her from that world of oppression in the way that she felt released when she was with him but I don't think she ever loved him like oh this is my person. I can't wait to spend my life with you. I don't think she ever felt that way about him. I no. think it was just that soul tie to him. I always felt like they were best friends. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I never got I that like romantic yeah. mm-hmm. feeling between them. I know they, I know they tried and I give them props for trying, but you know, I never felt that way. I just felt like they're buddies. Well, I yeah, feel like Christopher felt that way. As most of Lorelai's men do. I mean, Lorelai's yeah. an enigma. And I think Christopher was, I think Christopher was very, very much in love with her. I think it's part of the reason he ended up so screwed up. Yeah, I could see that. Because remember when they were on the stairs when her their parents found out she was pregnant? And she's going, Why don't we ask Lorelai and Christopher? They it's after all, it's happening to them. And Christopher says, Well, why don't we do what they're doing? It sounds good. We could get married. I could work at your dad's place. And Lorelai's like, what is wrong with you? Are you insane? No, we're not doing that. <laughs> well, I think Christopher, I think he gravitated towards Lorelai first and Lorelai was almost like, yeah, you know, there's no one else in the picture right now. Let's do it. And Christopher's like, oh, I love you. That's yeah. kind of the vibe I always felt from them. Yeah. I, I think that. so too. It, it was it, a lot it, one-sided. Mm-hmm. Right. Absolutely. And, and like we were just saying a minute ago, I mean, they're so young. And I think, Amanda, you put it great saying that they felt like they were more buddies, they were best friends. And I agree with the fact that it was just, you know, um, it, it wasn't, it wasn't like you said, it's not true love. And, and we're, we're in love together. And I'm going to spend the rest of my life with you. It just was part of their life at that time. And I think under other circumstances, Christopher would have gone his way, Lorelai would have gone her way. And, you know, it just would have been like, oh, yeah, you know, Maybe as adults, they would have crossed paths, but it wouldn't have been, you know, they're going to spend the rest of their lives together. I think post high school, they would have ended. Right, exactly. Probably at graduation. Probably so. (laughs) Definitely. 
I think that, and I really do, and not to say that Lorelai is the reason, like Lorelai screwed Chris up. I'm not saying that, but I mean, like with Christopher, I think because he was, I don't know if it was real love. I don't think Christopher ever, I mean, look at his parents. I don't think he was ever really shown what a real loving relationship looks like. I think he, he thought he was in love with her because he felt so connected to her. And again, there's that soul tie. They, they shared the first of everything. They gave everything of themselves to each other and they were their first. There is a soul tie with that. I, I think that there was, I think there was that. I think that he was thought he was head over heels for because as he was for Lorelai, she provided an escape from his oppressive home. His parents clearly didn't, I don't even think they loved each other or themselves. Certainly no. not their children by if how they talked to Christopher was anything to go by. And right. so I think that he didn't really understand what love was. I think it was, this is someone who's allowing me to be with them. This is someone who's showing me affection. This is someone who cares whether I live or die. This is someone who cares that, you know, I'm doing what I want or that I, I'm doing things that I want rather. And so I think because of that, he felt like he was in love with her. And I think just based off of that, he would have stayed with her forever, but not actually yeah. truly loving her. Just yeah. as he probably didn't even know that he wouldn't have loved her yeah you know, he was he was a, a a teenager he was a kid and, and like you said you know it was some it, i think both found refreshment in each other from they could relate to each other you mm -hmm. know similar households you know and and to, to find that that relief in in spending time together and just being maybe teenagers feeling like like again best friends just hanging out all the pressures of you know, society off of them and, and 16 years old, boy and a mm -hmm. girl, they just assumed that it was a love and, and not a friendship or camaraderie or just, you know, hey, I knew you from high school and, and you know, we're, we're friends. They, yeah. they just assumed it was true love and, and they were meant to be together forever. Well, I don't think Lorelai ever felt that way. That's uh, true. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I think Lorelai was very much aware that he, she was just kind of keeping time with him. Yes, that's the phrase I was looking for, keeping time earlier. That's the phrase I was trying to think of earlier. But yeah, but I, I, I agree with that. I don't think Lorelai ever had that picture in her head of, of she's going to, you know, get married and, you know, have the white picket fence. I think she, she maybe didn't know exactly what she wanted out of life, but she knew that she wanted to break free and find her mm -hmm. own path. Yeah. And I think that never really having that closure with Christopher made mm -hmm. him always her safety net. Yeah, I think we see that in later years. Like when he when he comes back first, when we first see him, and he's like, "Let's get married, Laura." She's like, Chris, come on! And he's like, "Saying no, I'm I'm mature now. I can do this stuff now." <laughs> I think that's his desperate grasp for stability because he doesn't have any. Once yeah. she left for him, for her, the no closure looked like okay, he's always my safety net. But she had Rory that forced her to grow up. Right, Chris didn't have a Rory to force her to grow up. But what he was seen as was an abysmal failure by his parents. And then he just floundered and grasped at things that he thought would make him big and make him be better in his parents' eyes. But he kept failing at one thing after another because he never spent the time to look and see what he's good at or what he could do. Or he never spent any time looking at himself. It was always constantly reaching, constantly reaching. So when he came back, I think it was more, hey, I was stable when I was with you, Lorelai. So I loved you because yeah. you made me better. So I'm, that must be love. So let's get married. And then later on when he's with Sherry and she says, I wanted to thank you for her because I couldn't move on until you were moved on. I don't even think, even when I see that scene, it annoys me because I don't <laughs> feel like that's a really honest thing. I yeah. think for her, it's more like, not that I loved you. And now that I see you on, on, now I can not love you anymore. I don't think that's what it was. I think it was more like you took away my safety net. So now I have no other thing to do, but move forward because you're right. no longer a plan B. Yeah. Right. Rather That's than exactly. I've always loved you. Absolutely. But with Christopher, I think that, I think she loved him in the way that you love someone who's important to you. Someone who is, yeah. right. he, he was, I, it seemed like he was her only friend growing up. I don't, I, she never talks about any other friends she had. She never no. talks about doing anything with anybody else. The only person you hear from, from her past is Christopher, even from Emily. Yeah. You know what else true. is mentioned. So, and very I obviously true. it's probably just because, you know, they don't want to pay other actors to play these younger people, but <laughs> the, the name can be mentioned without having to pay someone to play a part. Mm -hmm. So no. I think that she was really alone in high school and Christopher was also alone and that's why they gravitate to each other. So I think that as their only friends, oldest friends, 
she mm-hmm. loved him in that way. Yes. Oh yeah. And he was the father of her child, so I do. I I think I've always felt like she loved Christopher, but it wasn't. I don't feel like they, and I feel like he loved her, mm-hmm. but it wasn't the same type of love. Yeah. They were on two different spectrums with love mm-hmm. and that's not going to work. She needed to be with Luke. Yes. Even <laughs> back then she had no idea who he was, but they needed to be together. <laughs> I'm going to blow your mind soon. Not yet, but soon I'm going to blow your mind soon. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> my mind. I don't want my mind blown. My mind is good. <laughs> Our minds are okay. We're happy. <laughs> All right. So we go from Christopher, who's first love, who's a placeholder, who is just someone they both get a benefit from being with. And it's an immature love. I think Chris is even kind of, I think, I don't want to call him a coward. <laughs> <laughs> but i think christopher lives in fear fear mm-hmm. of disappointing and i think that's why on the stage he's like it's a good idea let's do that because he's yeah. so afraid of disappointment and it makes sense given his parentage but he's mm-hmm. so yeah. afraid of disappointment he's so afraid of failure and lorelei is obviously not afraid of any of that lorelei yeah. is obviously very independent very strong but i think christopher always needs someone in order to be feel whole he can't be independent completely. He's always right. reliant on either a relationship or money or his parents or the next thing he's reaching for always. And that's why he keeps coming back to Lorelai because he needs that other that other person to make him whole because he's such a codependent person. Lorelai, not like that, obviously. Right. <laughs> so when she meets Max, who is an adult, who has his own job who he worked hard for he's kind he's compassionate he cares about rory he fights for what he believes in so (laughs) she meets max who's a whole different experience from chris and max is someone who is already strong in himself and i Mm -hmm. think that's part of why laura like gravitated to him i think so yeah you there's just talk of none of the men who've ever been in my life have been in rory's life i don't let her meet them i don't let her be a part of it so we know that she's dated we don't mm-hmm. know who we're not introduced to those people. We aren't even given names for those people. They were obviously passing ships. They were nothing yeah. important. They were, I assume, just one date and done. Mm-hmm. So um, Max is someone who is solid, who's more solid than she's ever been, who comes right. from a family that's loving, that's kind, who he is not afraid to back down. He's not afraid to challenge her. He's not afraid to tell her the truth. I think Lorelai was really kind of, I mean, she's been going at this single mom game alone for a while. Yeah. Right. Lori's Rory's yeah. what? 16. When 16. Max appears. So I think this 15 or 16. I don't remember. Well, it, she has a birthday pretty. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. It was her. Oh, that's right. It was her 16th birthday. It was her six. So we met her when she was 15 and she turned 16 in like the first few episodes. Yeah. So she's 16 when Max comes in the picture. Yeah. Because it's before her second year at Chilton. Mm-hmm. But I think that part of her was probably feeling pretty run down, probably pretty desperate, probably pretty alone. And here is this strong man who's a good looking guy who shows an interest in her, who who invigorates her in a way that and challenges her in a way that she has not been challenged before. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's really what drew her to him. Absolutely. I, think so. I never liked. The- the Lorelai and Max relationship. I never, it, I know some people do. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but <laughs> I just, I didn't like hate it. Mm-hmm. I was just, I would forget about him. He was kind of like a Paul to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, really? I would forget. I, I honestly would forget about him. Wow. I feel bad about that. And I, when I read watching it now, I'm like, I do like him. Mm-hmm. I he's just forgot guy. about him. Again, he's just not Luke. So, I mean, no. you know, <laughs> he's just not that important if he's not Luke. <laughs> yeah. Can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think, um, as y'all were saying, she was drawn to just the concept of, you know, having a stable boyfriend and I think because Rory already knew him and and 
you know, he already had just like a very almost fatherly uh, figure, you know, he was a good matchup for that, you know, and of course, once, yeah. once Rory gave her blessing, you know, she felt okay with that. I think it was on the outside picture perfect in her mind, I think. It was a, a new season, if you will. And, you know, here's a stable guy. He's got a stable job. He's seem, seemingly the right guy, you know, seemingly Mr. Right. But I think uh, at the end of the day, I think she was just more in love with the concept of Max versus yeah. Max himself. You know, having, you know, a stable relationship, if she was ever going to get married, I think she even mentioned, you know, until Max outside of everybody, you know, freaking out, you know, when she got pregnant with Rory about marrying Christopher, outside of that, she never once thought of marriage until she met Max. Yeah. And I think it was yeah. just more the concept of, you know, this is the kind of guy that would be appropriate, you know, and, and what would be the next step to get married, to create a family. And it was just more of wanting to want to marry him and wanting to want to love him versus it being genuine mm -hmm. and, and wanting to, you know, truly, you know, spend the rest of their lives together. So I think that it was just more of like a picture perfect, but not real. Yeah. It never was. Mm -hmm. And I think of that with Max too, I think because he was so stable that to her, she always kind of thought she wanted stability. But when it came down to it, I don't think she wanted that. I think she want. I mean, Lorelai is very, we discussed already. Lorelai is very independent. Lorelai right. likes what she likes and she wants what she wants. Yeah. There's yeah. no in between there. And you could see it even when they were engaged or when they were talking about moving in together. And it was that double date with Dean and Roy. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah. um, they're downstairs. What do I do? What do you mean? What do you do? <laughs> let them go until they, their mouths get tired or something like that. And then yeah. <laughs> he says, well, I'm serious, Lorelai. I'm going to be moving in here. I got to know what, I, what my role is here. And she said, my fella. You don't have a role. Rory's been raised. You're done. You don't have to participate in her. Wow. Yeah. Max wanted to be a family. Lorelai didn't know how to be a family. And if I'm being yeah. fully honest, I don't think she does still. Yeah. She's very protective over Rory. She doesn't want. She's okay with Luke. Kind of. But she's, I feel like she's very like. I don't know. I can't, I, I have a word in my head and I can't think of it. I think she's more protective of her lifestyle. Selfish. She is a Rory. She's selfish with yeah. Rory. That's, that's, that's Rory. the word I was trying to th <laughs> think of. Yeah. She's very selfish with Rory. I'll agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think so too, because even um, Christopher kind of made that uh, remark. Uh, well, it was in the year in the life, but he still kind of made that remark about, well, you know, you're raised now, you know, Lorelai did her job. Now she feels like she's free to move on and, you know, with her life and do something for herself. So even then that implied that, hey, you know, obviously and, and rightfully so as Rory's mother, Rory is always gonna come first. But I think, you know, maybe it's not always approached the right way, but, you know, she was always gonna be putting Rory first before herself. So if it meant she stayed single until Rory was, well on her own you know that's what was going to happen but you know at the same time too i think you said you know she was okay with luke and and, and again and we're probably going to touch on more of this when we get to luke but you know when when was the moment that she proposed to him when she saw how concerned he was over rory you know when he saw how so that was that moment so in in you know i think rory was always going to come first which again you know as her mother that was appropriate but it just depends on on her perspective and approach and and, and how she handled those situations. You know, it, it, do, it had to to find the right person who she'd be willing to share her life with. But maybe she wasn't necessarily willing to share her life in her lifestyle. And obviously, Rory with someone. You know, mm -hmm. it was her. She was hers. <laughs> there is so much of a rebuttal I have for that, but I gotta wait till we get to Luke. <laughs> I was like, you know, me. Like about Luke, but we're not there yet. <laughs> it's I was always literally really just holding coming back together. to Luke. I mean, <laughs> I was literally <laughs> holding my lips together, so I didn't. Oh no. Uh oh. <laughs> you know, I have, I have a more unpopular opinion of Lorelai's love life than uh -oh. your average Gilmore Girl watcher. I think, I think I kind of have a feeling about what you were implying. 
<laughs> but you know, I mean, but but here's the thing I think that we forget a lot is that Lorelai, even though she was only 16 when she had Rory, mm-hmm. even though she left home at 16, almost 17 when she had Rory, right? Because right. 16 takes nine to 10 months. So she's 17 by the time she leaves home. Mm-hmm. She's an adult. The moment that strip turned pink, and I think Lorelai Rory even said, or, oh my gosh, Lorelai even says that at, <laughs> at one point. The minute the, the strip turned pink, I grew up, she says. It's 100% right. true. So she, but her leaving home had less to do with it was a need in order to raise Rory, but I think more to do with the fact that she was a 17-year-old girl who honestly got pregnant because she was trying to escape an oppressive place. That's how she got in the position she was in. It wasn't love. It wasn't because she was with her soulmate. It wasn't any of that. She got pregnant because she was trying to escape something. And when she left home, she was proving something. And I think that, I don't think it was so much that she was selfish over Rory, which she was, because I think she's just generally selfish. But again, it's because she had to grow up at 16 and no 16 year old is fully formed enough to be like, I'm going to be totally unselfish. I'm going to put everybody else first. I have a hard time doing that. I'm 38. There's no way I was doing that when I was 16 or 17. No way. Right. Yeah. But that's where Laura like kind of stayed because everything in her life has been proving something to her parents. That's why she wouldn't let her mom pay for the DSL. That's why she wouldn't let her mom buy Rory clothes. That's why she got upset when her mom wanted to buy Rory a car. Everything about Lorelai's life has been proving that she can do it on her own. And so when Max wanted to take part in that, it was, no, this is my lifestyle. I do what I want now because I was told my whole life what to do. So now no one is going to tell me what to do. Even if you're coming alongside a partner, you're going to do what I say. And that's the kind of relationship I want. And Max didn't want that. Max wanted a partnership. Right. He wanted to step into yeah. a mature relationship that was stable enough to be a partnership. But one, Lorelai didn't want that because she was told her whole life what to what do, to do. Rules, rituals, regulations. That's why she left home because she couldn't stand that it was too oppressive. She didn't want that. She couldn't breathe. So her entire life was about her rules, her way all the time. She even says that to Rory all the time. Right. Yeah. But also because her father ran her mother. Yes, Emily was the head of that house, but Emily was raised in an era war. The wife is the help me, help meet to the husband. The wife doesn't get a job. The wife does for the husband, does for the husband, does for the husband and raises the kids. That's the wife's job. She's basically not seen, but if the husband says jump, you say how high. Mm -hmm. That was the home she grew up in. And I think that's what Lorelai perceives as a partnership because that's as much as she fought what her parents were, that's what she perceives as a partnership. So when Max wanted to help, wanted to be a part of that and come alongside her, she thought, uh uh-uh, no and she started to get scared yeah do you remember that scene after the bachelor party when he was like and guess what i still don't have and she went keys and he's like yes keys right. it's pretty hard to get into somewhere when i don't have keys she said well i just forgot he said no you need to think about someone other than yourself once in a while mm-hmm. he apologized but he said what was right and what was true because Lorelai was- is about her and her lifestyle and what she has with rory and no one else can intrude on that because it's yep. what she built right mm-hmm. and she doesn't she's uh, it, it was almost like fear she's afraid of, of losing control she's trying to hold she's clinging too hard to the reins because she's afraid if she releases even for someone else to grab them with her you know it's it's she's gonna lose that control that she's been mm-hmm. fighting her whole life to gain and retain exactly and it, it, it just came through in little things like the keys and his perception of hey you know think of someone else exactly Mm -hmm. you know and and again like you said I mean it's it's hard for you know anyone at any age but I think you know to have to start her life so young you know that obviously did not help that situation (laughs) yeah you know when you see where where it all started yeah absolutely and I think too that to have someone partner alongside her and help her would prove to her parents, see, you couldn't do it on your own, at least in her head. I don't think her, I think her parents want her to get married and it right. would have been, see, you can't do it on your own. It would have been finally you're married. Right. Yeah. But I and think, to, I think to her, probably, it said, you can't make it on your own. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I think that's how she perceived it. And then they're thinking that just you grow up, you get married and she's perceiving, she's reading into it, you know, because of her childhood experiences, mm-hmm. you know, she's taking it as you know, maybe a form of, of partial failure. Yeah. Adulthood, you know? And I think the fact that Max was starting to see through that Mm -hmm. 
was something she couldn't have because if he could see through it, then he was not going to allow her to live that way when they were married. Because that's true. She always tried to hide. That's who she was. And I do love though, that, I mean, when they, when they came back together and he proposed in that argument, she said, no, this isn't what you do. You don't propose in an argument. Max showed that he, I mean, he obviously understood there was something between Lorelai and Luke. Obviously he understood that. Right. And I think, I don't think Lorelai was ever, at least not consciously or subconsciously ever unaware of the effect Luke had on her or ever unaware of the effect she had on Luke. I think she was partly aware of the effect she had on Luke. Yeah, I think so too. I think that she knew there was a possibility of something, but I think maybe she could sense that there was something real there and maybe she was just too afraid because of, you know, all the things that we mentioned, maybe she just didn't want to lose that possibility of something good for the reasons that she was going to be losing Max for, you Mm -hmm. know, maybe she just didn't want to risk it. Yeah. No, that makes sense. A little bit afraid because she was actually going to find what she was looking for and it was going to be everything she wanted. And, and as she, later on with the dress and she was a little worried that it was too perfect. Maybe there's something wrong. Maybe that's what she was thinking. Like, Oh my yeah. gosh, it's too good to be true. So mm-hmm. we're not even going to go there. <laughs> you know, I don't know. But I think, I think too, that when it was interesting to me that the whole, one of the main reasons I think that she realized she couldn't be with Max is because he offered her a life that she thought her parents had. Mm-hmm. But then she also decided she wasn't in love with him because she realized how much she was like her mother. Oh, wow. So it's yeah. inter- those two things are always warring with Lorelai, always. Yeah. Because at that bachelorette party, when Emily yeah. said, I couldn't wait to try my wedding dress every night. Wow. And then when Rory says, but mom, why? And Lorelai cries and says, because I didn't want to try my wedding dress every night. And that's why Rory immediately jumped up and was like, okay, let's do this. Because they both realized how momentous that was that right. I, even if I'm fighting my parents, I am still a product of them. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a lot like my mother and I don't love him because I don't have the same affection. You can say all you want about my parents, but my mother loved my father. Wow. Absolutely. If I, don't, if I don't have that kind of, if I don't feel that way, then I know it's not actually love. And so she did make the right decision in the end. Mm-hmm. Right. I think Obviously. she could have loved him if she let herself. She would have grown to love him, but yeah, it, it's, I think it's good that she realized before it was too late, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Made the right decision. I agree. But even when he comes back, <laughs> <laughs> that really bugged me a lot. When he came back, like when he came back, Lorelai was so cruel. I no. felt, is that, is that not the reaction you guys had about it? <laughs> You know, shock no, on your I face. agree with you. Oh, okay. No, I agree no, with I agree. you. I just heard someone say, oh, when I said cruel. <laughs> like, oh, okay, maybe I'm yeah, just, maybe yeah, no, I'm just thinking how the, the whole thing of him coming back just and, and on both sides, it was just you kind of cringe when it happens, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he's telling her, stop. And she still tries to go to him. Like, do you respect right. no one other than yourself? The man is telling you, no, stop. And yet you keep going. Mm-hmm. If right. there was ever an indication of Lorelai's mindset, it was that. Well, but I want to. So I'm going to. <laughs> like, <laughs> as <far> it goes. <laughs> I hated that. I, I thought she was so mean to him. And Max is a, is a good guy. He didn't deserve that. Oh, yeah. Certainly not if she had no intention, which I don't think she did. I think she was at a sad moment where she was lonely. I think, I think so too. It, was. it just, I think it was just shocking for her too. I don't think she was prepared for it. And I don't think she knew how to react or how she was going to react. I think it just kind of pulled the rug out from under her. And, and I think just knee jerk reaction, you know, mm-hmm. kind of came into play, but yeah, I mean, he should have, they should have handled it as adults and, and just he stopped. tried. He did. <laughs> she should have handled it as an adult. <laughs> yeah. Even when she was being childish, she was still trying to handle it as an adult until she wouldn't listen. So he had to use furniture to keep her from <laughs> behaving like an adult. But right. I think in those, that's the same reason Lorelai kept going back to Chris because he was a safety net. Mm-hmm. Lorelai left both of them when they were both in love with her. And because they were both in love with her, there was no closure. She was the one who left. She always viewed them as a safety net. So when she was feeling insecure, when she was feeling lonely, she would fall back into someone who was still there. And Max happened to be there. Right. And I think that she did care about him. I just don't think she loved him. She cared about him, 
Oh yeah. But I think that was enough for her. I agree. Like, not, not enough for her permanently, but enough to fall back in with them for a moment. Yeah. Right. To find that stability of really, I think she just needed a friend and I don't think she realized that, you know, yeah. she just needed some guidance and because she distanced herself from her parents, you know, I think, you know, maybe there were times where she could have gone to them or, you know, even, you know, as growing up, you know, her, you know, having that surrogate mother and grandmother, she had that, but in this time of her life, she didn't anymore, mm -hmm. you know, so she's maybe feeling like she truly is on her own, you know, and, and, and she had other friends, but, you know, maybe she was looking for a little bit more guidance and here they represented stability. Like you said, they represented a safety net. And so she was realizing, Hey, you know, let's come back over here. When in reality, it wasn't that, well, I love you. Let's get back together. And, and, you know, let's get married or, or start dating again. But it was, this represents a time in my life where, you know, I, I could, I guess, be whole, if, if you want to say it that way. Um, you know, like you said, just that stability, it rep they represented stability for her. I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. And I think too, that there is a, there's a level of hypocrisy to her relationship with Max, because you remember the Chilton dad? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Ian, I think was his name. I really yep. liked Ian, by the way. I thought he would have matched her well. Oh, yeah, not for long-term. That would have <laughs> just been fun. It, <laughs> it would have been a couple of dates. <laughs> no, I think it would have been longer than a couple of dates, but it was, I think it would have been like a Max. <laughs> It was, I can't possibly date a Chilton dad. You know, my daughter goes here. I can't date a Chilton dad. Chilton teacher now. I can date my daughter's <laughs> really teacher. <sorry. laughs> Where is the logic in that, Lorelai? That's, that's, that's better. Too. I was like, she, she said no to the, to, to the dad, but I just thought maybe enough time had passed. She changed her mind. Like, ah, it'll be fine. You know, but yeah, I caught that too. <laughs> it bugs me every time that scene comes up, like, should have dated the dad. He would have been more appropriate. Probably oh, wouldn't have had a broken engagement because it wouldn't have gotten that far. That's true. Yeah, it would never have gotten that far. She would have just moved on. <laughs> but I do like the scene when Michelle yeah. is like, somebody's at the front desk for you. And she said, she said something. Is it my mother? And he's like, it could be. And she walks out there and it's him leaning over the counter. And she just looks at Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. Could be. But I did like him. I thought he was an attractive guy. I thought he bantered with her well. Max, I think, was probably a little... That's probably why she gravitated to him, because Max was a little more serious. This guy was a little more at Lorelai's speed. Right. Which is why it lasted, <laughs> because she needs someone opposite to her to balance right. her out. You can't have two Lorelai's in a relationship without it yeah. fizzling out very fast. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, that would have been difficult. <laughs> so after Max, she's alone for a while. Yes. But then her and Suki start going to the conference center. And she meets mm -hmm. Alex, who is my personal favorite for Lorelai. Oh, well, you know, he was kind Better of like the Luke. coffee guy also. You know, he was going for, that's what it was. I think it was just the coffee <laughs> that <laughs> first attracted them together because he was trying to open a coffee shop. And she's like, wait a minute. <laughs> I think it was more than that. Oh, I yeah. Think because... Oh yeah, it definitely was more than that. But it just kind of, I, I just thought it was a humorous thing. That, yeah. Like, wait a minute another coffee guy what <laughs> but I think that he was serious enough to be opposite her but also had enough of her that he could still banter with her yes because when they were in the lobby and she was like oh oh Chaco or whatever his name was he's like um do we know this person she's like just play along <laughs> play along and then he's like oh okay and then he would play along with her clearly uncomfortable but still willing to do it because it made her laugh and then when they he was willing to go to New York City with her he was willing to go on double dates with her friends. He yeah. was willing to do all this stuff. Of course, Luke does it at some point. Lorelai tries to shove him out to the woods to go camping because she thinks he's not having enough <laughs> Luke time. But still, with Alex, Alex had fun when he was out with her friends and her. Yes. Alex enjoyed what made her happy, but he also enjoyed what made him happy. Because mm -hmm. with the fishing trip, remember when he took her on the fishing trip? Yes. And he looked at Rory. He's like, she's never done this before a day in her life, has she? <laughs> Rory's like, nope. He's like, okay. We're still going to go. So yeah. he, he knew she didn't do it, but he still wanted to do it with her because I think that was one relationship where Lorelai volunteered to, she never volunteered to go fishing with Luke, not ever. Yeah. But she was willing to do things with Alex because Alex did them. And Alex was willing to do things with Lorelai because it was what Lorelai did. Mm -hmm. That I think is what a really healthy relationship looks like is where one, they're, they're compromising. 
And that is the only relationship where compromise takes place. With Luke, there is no compromise. It's still Lorelai's way and Luke will follow. Yeah. Alex, I think was my preferred partner for her. You think so, Alex? Mm -hmm. Alex was fun. And you know, it's funny because she, he was- Because he just of, disappeared? Yes. He was one of Lorelai's like long-term relationships. Mm -hmm. And you know, that he, he, she's talked about him, but you only see, I mean, he has such small screen time. And we talk about that and we're wondering if maybe that kind of, uh inspired and and i think this is probably a whole subject a whole episode on its own that we could talk about it paul and and you're in the life that whole running gag that just kind of confuses so many yep. people it's just kind of so awkward and you know the only way we, we could reconcile it is possibly like maybe it's just a joke off of paul i mean off of alex because alex yep. was such a huge part of lorelei's life i mean he was such a long-term ter partner and like you said they got along so well and he was like a really good match for her and you only see him like just a few episodes, you know, he's talked about a few times, but he's like, never, never there. Yeah. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. Who's that? Like no. that's. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say Alex would actually be my, my second choice for Lorelai. He's my first. I mean, out of, out of all, what, five of them there is, he would be my second because I mean, I, I did I, I did enjoy them when they were together but oh, yeah that's not who I wanted her with so I was kind of wanting him to like yeah go ahead and go that's always kind of where I was watching the show I was like okay all these other men go <laughs> I didn't give anybody else a chance <laughs> right. I'll try this time more you watching yeah <laughs> I'll try and if you notice, though, I, and I think maybe that was on purpose that we feel that way, because maybe even um, the Paladinos may have, well, obviously, I mean, they knew what they were writing, but they, you know, put that, they plant that idea, because even as we were talking about with the, you know, learning to fish for the fishing trip, uh, who does she go to? She goes to Luke, and then Luke's teaching her, and there's always that moment of, oh, you know, yet he's, she's doing this for another another man and ever since you know season one everybody knew how much since episode one everybody knew how much Luke was in love with Lorelai and, and so yet he's still helping her even though he knows it's for another man you can see how it hurts him inside but he's putting that aside because he's doing it for her out of his love for her and so I think that was you know it's obviously scripted that I think there's always that little hint of well, this is a great relationship, but in the back of your mind, there's always Luke. I think that was on obviously on purpose, you know, and it kind of, I think that kind of happened to Lorelai too. You know, this is a seemingly perfect thing, but in the back of your mind, you know, I mean, I don't know who else in Stars Hollow she could have gone to to ask to learn how to go fishing. Nobody. Kirk. Yeah, it's true. So, you know, it had to be <laughs> Luke. I don't know that Kirk is the one you want to teach you anything. <laughs> but no. Kirk can do everything. He does do everything, but I don't think he wants to learn anything from Kirk. I don't know. I feel like maybe Maury went fishing with. I don't know. But... <laughs> Jackson. Jackson. He's not that's really true. a fisherman, though. He's, he's not. A, but... He's a I... farmer and he's a guy. He, like he's, They talk about him as a guy's guy, but never once does he ever go. Do they ever talk about him fishing? It's always about farming and food. I bet he and... knows how. Oh, I'm sure he knows how, but it, just, it had it. to be Luke. It had to be Luke. It did. I know that that was Paladino's endgame because Luke, because I mean, Luke was originally supposed to be a girl. Right. And so and they wrote Luke in. So obviously he's got to have a more stable role in the show because they created the character for him, basically. Right. So obviously they did. But I think there were two reasons he was written out of the show and the way he was was because one, he was such a good match for her that if he stayed around, there was no way she was going to be good with anybody else because Alex was the best for her. And two, I mean, it does look like he was pretty busy, but I mean, from 2004 to 2007, he had nothing come out. He was in Gilmore Girls in 2003. So, I mean, he was filming Gilmore Girls while filming 24, but still, I think that he was just disappeared like that because the chemistry was so good there and because they related so well because they were such a perfect match that if they didn't just make him disappear there's no way anyone else is gonna be good yeah and i know that's not popular opinion i know that everyone, <laughs> for everyone luke's end game not for me alex should have been end game oh well i agree with man i mean i think he, he obviously i mean i'm always gonna pick luke for number one but if uh, aside you know 
after that, you know, Max, I think would, was, would be my second choice because he was a really, really good match for her. He seemed stable enough and, and fun enough to get along with her. So yeah, there's definitely, I mean, nothing, nothing negative to say about that relationship other than the fact that he just wasn't Luke and Luke's my favorite, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. but yeah, definitely. No, that's actually, like you said, it's not a common opinion, but it's a really good opinion. You know, I think if they weren't playing the, the, the end game of Luke, Max would have been a really great pairing for her if it was a different Max? show, a different approach. Alex! <laughs> I don't know if Max being a great fit for her. <laughs> that the regular show I met Alex. <laughs> <laughs> they have the same, they had a, a same letter there, so I just got confused. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I get it. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> no, but honestly, if it were a different show, um, if they hadn't picked Scott Patterson to play Luke and, and the character was different after all, then yeah, absolutely. Max would have been a really good choice. Alex? Alex! <laughs> <laughs> She's doing it just to mess with you now. <laughs> I wish that were true. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I pointed it out once and now it's in your head. So now you're just going to say Max every single time you say Alex. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But now I hear it every single, I wonder how many times you said Max before that, that I was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. And then I caught it like, wait, what? Everybody's going to be like, uh, she moved on. I caught it the same time you did, so. <laughs> Who knows? I, I think even with Scott Patterson as Al, or, oh my gosh, even if Scott Patterson is Luke. <laughs> Woo! We are on fire tonight. Even with Scott mm -hmm. Patterson as Luke, even as him in that position, Alex is still best for her, better than Luke. They are better matched. They have better chemistry. He does not just follow Lorelai around like a puppy. He, they do, they compromise. They do each other's things. They are fully equally involved in each other's lives. Yeah, he's number two. <laughs> 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 the only thing for me that would make Luke number one for Lorelai is the fact that that's how it was scripted. The fact that it was scripted that way. And you know, I think possibly too, and the fact that he kind of preludes, I mean, obviously Jason comes first, but Alex is almost like showing her what a real relationship, like, oh, she's realizing I can have this you know, look how well we are together. Like this could actually, this could be real. This could not be too good to be true. This, you know, having a, a good relationship could truly be true. Um, so I think maybe that's in that moment during the Alex relationship is, is almost like when she has that realization of, you know, I can, I can do this, you know, mm -hmm. have, have a, a husband and, and raise Rory and, and, and have the life that I want, you know? I yeah. think that's the realization in that relationship. I think too with Alex, like Max wanted to be inserted and he wanted to be seen as having always been there almost. Like, no, I'm I'm stepdad now. So I'm equal parent. I'm equal everything now because I'm coming in here. Right. Which is not, it, it, even even a step parent, that's not true. I mean, and I think that Alex, or I think that Max, <laughs> Dang it. I think that, this is just going to stay in because this is uh. now. It's like a game. <laughs> Viewers, if you can spot how many times we screw up Max and Alex. There you go. I'll send you something pretty. There you go. But, oh, speaking of. Yeah. So for our viewers and listeners alike, we have our code word for you. And our code word is... Melix. So it's M A L E X. Like Max and Alex push together. Malix. You guys Malix. got it? Malix. It's Malix. Malix. So the code Malix. word is Malix. We're just going to say Malix a bunch of times really quick, like Malix, because we're not going to say Malix at the end. And we're not no. going to say Malix at the beginning. We're only going to say no. Malix right here, right now. And if you don't know that the code word is Malix, then you, I don't you know. You don't get our special price. <laughs> If this is the first you're hearing about CoWord, because this is the first podcast you've listened to, or the Gilmore Girls are the only ones you listen to, you go back through our podcast from last Wednesday is when we started it. Mm -hmm. Listen to every podcast after that, and there is a code word in every one of our podcasts, and there will be until the end of August. 
the end of August, August 30th, we will send out information on our fan page for fandom family chats. You can find that on Facebook. We'll also put it on Twitter. We'll put it on our Instagram. And I'll probably put it in the groups too. Just in all the groups. We're going to tell you how to get us all your code words. Okay. The first person to get us all the code words, get something very special sent to you from your fan and family chats team. And we might work with you on what that is. So go back and watch through those and, and catch that. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think that. I think that the reason that the Paladinos, why they, I, I, obviously we talked about how I think they made him disappear because he was the best match. But I also think that it, it's kind of unsettling because with Max, we saw the breakdown of Lorelai, like, no, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. With Crestor, we see the back and forth always of, no, I can't do this. With Alex, it was, you know, Alex and I are doing this. Yes, we're going to do this. Hey, we're going away for this weekend. Hey, we're going to do this. And then the last mention we hear of him, I think, is where someone asks where he is. And she says, oh, he's away at this. That's the last we hear of him. There's no closure to that. There's no who broke up with who. What happened there? Why did you break up? Did he? Were you just in two different places? Was he just too busy with his thing and you were too busy with yours? Like there's no, no closure, no information whatsoever. And I really think I love the Paladinos. Like seriously, if I could be best friends with Amy and Dan, I would be best friends <laughs> with Amy and Dan. I would have them stand up and I would have a vow <laughs> renewal just so they could stand up in my wedding. Oh, <laughs> but that was bad writing. <laughs> <laughs> with Alex just with Alex want to be very clear just with how they dealt with Alex because we got no explanation and maybe they thought it was a, if they thought it was a joke then it's not bad writing but it didn't feel like it was a joke then it felt like Alex no longer served their purpose so he was just didn't exist anymore he's what it felt like as a viewer if it was a joke I think that in the numerous panels and comic cons that they did that should have been stated oh Alex he, that was just a joke how we ended that yeah but it just felt like he didn't serve the purpose for their story anymore. So he was just done. I didn't, I didn't like that. Yeah. It was kind of a, I think that's why we don't forget. I think that's why a lot of people do forget about him is because I don't feel like there was real closure in there. And it was kind of like a passing by kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It felt like because the last thing we see, they were happy together. They were working, they were doing well. Mm-hmm. That's the last thing we see. And then, yep. then time passes. So you just try to reconcile it, but Not me. he's gone. And again, that's why I think they did the joke that they did with Paul. Yeah. It was like a representation of it. And it's and that's the only way we could reconcile Paul too. Yeah. Because there so was I, no... That wasn't even a funny bit. So that had to be a throwback to Alex. Exactly. The only way to make sense of Paul is to throw it back to Alex because Mm -hmm. he was Lorelai's boyfriend and and he was, you know, such a huge part of her life, but yet he was never there. You never saw him to the point where you forget him. And I think that's what Paul was. I mean, I can't think of any other explanation outside of that, but yeah. Um, there's because no, I mean, the Paladinos are good writers. They're good at what they do. So that Paul bit, unless it was a throwback to that, it was just really a misfire. Alex misses the last eight episodes in person of season three, but he still mentioned past episode 14. So mm-hmm. I would say he misses like the last six. So he's in over half, you know, he, he goes just past half of season three. Episode three of season four, Digger Styles appears. So it seems like the other reason Alex was made to like mafia disappear, <laughs> it was to make way for Jason. Well, because that yeah. was a whole nother storyline, a way to nudge her parents. Now, Jason and Lorelai are a whole different breed because that one was doomed from the start. I mean, if you start dating someone just because your mother ticks you off, yeah, probably not right. the best way to start. But I do like, I think he was fun though. I don't dislike Digger. I don't, I, I don't. I don't dislike that relationship. He was weird, but I think he matched Lorelai in terms of wit, in terms of quirk. His quirks were just different than Lorelai's and a little weirder than Lorelai's, but still they were both quirky. (laughs) But I do like the scene where she was mad at him for um, ruining the Russian tea party that that Emily was throwing and she goes into his office and she calls him Digger like six times. And then he goes, (laughs) who wants? (laughs) <laughs> you just call me umlauts hey you called me digger three times before i said umlauts that shows great restraint <laughs> so I, I think that he is well matched to her mentally 
but I think that is the only way they are well matched. In no other way are they well matched. They aren't well matched in terms of physicality. They aren't well matched in terms of places in life that they are. They aren't well matched in where they want out of life. It was just they could match each other with wit. That, that was what, that was it. That was where they were well matched. That was they it. were attracted to each other, but that that is not enough for a relationship. And I don't yeah. even think she was attracted to him. It was just, as you said, it was just a means to get back at her mother. The only thing that I liked about that was that, you know, Digger and Lorelai was the scene when they go to the grocery store on the date. You know, they, first they go to the restaurant, that doesn't work out. She wants tacos, he doesn't. And it just, finally, they end up at the grocery store and everything that happened... <laughs> <laughs> on that date you know just the way it all played out it was like man that was awesome like mm -hmm. that was a lot of fun and I kind of wish that it was someone other than than Jason that <laughs> had that date with because that's pretty much my favorite part of, other than that I'm just it's you know it's it's he's just a passing ship <laughs> yeah. but um you know I I don't know if anyone else could have created that with Lorelai you know, uh, as you were saying, they matched wits. And I think that maybe he was able, they were both able to kind of play that together that date. And it just was kind of a lot of fun. But again, that that was not ever going to be a serious relationship for her. Um, even if she believed it was for a certain amount of time, it just, it, it was never meant to be serious. You know, she she was doing it out of spite. So it was yeah. never going to go. In. It, was, it was doomed from the start. I'd agree. And I, I don't think, like Jason. <laughs> <laughs> me and you, Amanda. Me and you. <laughs> I don't like him. The only, yeah, like I said, the only positive thing is, is that that one date. I don't really care for the rest. <laughs> the rest of the, his, the dog. The dog was really cute. <laughs> Iris, a little to the left. <laughs> I know. His so, his house just creeped me out, and him making her sleep in a separate bedroom just creeped me out. I said his quirks I, were weird. <laughs> he just yeah, he weirded me out. I just I don't. I did. He made me laugh. I remember that he was fun. He, he was fun. He made right. me laugh, but I did Unmute. not like them together. No, <laughs> I think he was a distraction for Lorelai. Mm -hmm. Yes. It, it was a means to blow off steam. She was mad at her mom. You know, she knew him for a long time. Uh, it, it was it was a distraction, yeah. I think that one of the reasons she never told her parents kind of goes back to what her mom said about Luke is, unless he's a passing ship, I don't want to meet a passing ship. Is he a passing ship? No, it was Max that she said that to. Mm -hmm. And she's like, no, he's not a passing ship. And... Um, so I think that it goes back to that. I, I think that's the reason she didn't tell her parents. Yeah, it was tenuous because he was her dad's business partner. But I think Jason made very good arguments that, listen, your dad's just going to be mad if we wait and we hide it from him. And I think Lorelai was very well aware of that. But I think she was willing to whisk, risk that because she wasn't willing to tell her parents that this passing ship is who she was dating. And that's right. what he was, was a passing ship. He was unimportant. He was a diversion. He was a distraction. And I think that Lorelai was probably Jason's most stable relationship because she matched him in wits. I don't think anybody else would have tolerated his quirks. So right. I think that's why Jason came back for her in season four. Mm -hmm. I don't think he actually loved her. I think that he was like, we work together. And that was it. Right. Yeah. That was his extent. We, we work together. We don't fight. We get along. We have the same wit. We can match each other mentally par for par we work. And I think that's all Jason knows is work. And you can see that by never takes a day off. Right. He's supposed to have a date. He's out in the car for hours on end talking when he's supposed to be with Lorelai. So right. all, his head only works towards functioning at, at, at a work level. And mm -hmm. so he categorizes things. And I think he categorized the relationship. I think he went through the relationship and was like, okay, this got worse when we broke up. This was better when we were dating this function when we were dating this doesn't function out we're apart okay so we work together so we have to be together and i think that's as far as it went and i don't think i don't think jason yeah. ever professed to say he loved her ever i don't think so i think what he said when he showed up in the inn was we were we were working we worked i think that's all he said mm -hmm. and that's not oh, what an unpleasant relationship to be in that right. would have been her parents relationship 
where the dad or the husband or whatever was always off traveling, always off working, never had time for the family, never had time to stop, except for when it was convenient or when they work didn't call because work would always take precedence. Right. As it did when he sued Richard. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, another reason to be fair, he was fully in the right to sue Richard because that was a jerk move. Richard, that is the first time I was mad at Richard. Not because it was Jason. How dare you do it to Jason? How dare you do it to Laura's, but Lorelai's boyfriend. But as a person, as a man of business, that was a low blow. That was, and Richard should, is not a low blow kind of guy. Richard yeah. is, he might do things with finesse, like when he, Jason joined him, but I don't think he's a guy who fights below the belt. And that was below the belt. And I was really disappointed in Richard for that move. There are other ways he could have dealt with that situation, but he chose to blacklist completely screw over and annihilate jason just because he was dating her his daughter like that's it that was the only reason that's that was the side of richard i didn't like yeah i agree i didn't like that but i agree with lorelei i can't date someone who's suing my family like i agree and then it, it kind of shows that too that even you know whatever odds she has with her parents when when the rubber hits the road it's like they're her parents it's her mom and dad mm-hmm. and yeah. it's she's gonna side with them I mean he's suing her dad and mm-hmm. at the end of the day I mean it's it's her father and she's gonna you know protect him and she's gonna stand with him yeah even if it's not in a traditional sense because you know she's wanting to be independent and on her own and but yeah she she wasn't gonna stand for it she wasn't gonna pick digger over over her mm-hmm. parents and that was that also kind of showed you know hey you know, they're still her mom and dad. She still yeah. has that. That it was another way of showing that love that she has for them. And I think it was another way that Digger didn't understand her. Right. Because he didn't have that with his own family. So he couldn't, he couldn't recognize that's what she was doing. He couldn't see her reasoning behind it. Yeah. In his mind, it's like, you don't like your parents. So who cares? Right. Exactly. <laughs> Just exactly. stay with me anyway, because you don't even like them. So it shouldn't affect you at all. You don't like them. Right, you should still side with me, and that's not the case. And then that go that just goes to show how Lorelai was never like them, you know. Yeah. Meaning, like you know, the Styles family or the Hayden mm-hmm. family. It was, you know, she was more genuine, and she was she was cut from her own cloth. Yeah, yeah. I think because you can say what you want about how Richard and Emily raised her, and yeah, they were things that they certainly did wrong. There were things they shouldn't have done, but I don't think they were overall bad parents. No, I think that they were no. oppressive, certainly. But in general, all the flashbacks, I didn't think that they were that terrible. I mean, I wouldn't be pleased if my 16-year-old daughter came home pregnant. I wouldn't be happy about that. And no. I, it, so I don't think that it was as a, it was oppressive for her because it's not what she wanted. Mm-hmm. But her parents genuinely loved each other, like genuinely loved each other. Oh, yeah. And I think they genuinely love Lorelai. Absolutely. But with the manipulation to come to Friday Night Dinners, Emily learned very early on, that's how you speak to Lorelai. That the only way you can get Lorelai to come to you is to trick her into coming to you. Because mm-hmm. if you tell her, to, it's like that episode where Lorelai's like, I don't know if I like my hair up. Do I like my hair down or is it because my mom hated it up? And then she's trying <laughs> all those pop tarts. Right. Emily understands her daughter. And I think that's the other reason that why with Max, she was like, I don't want to try my wedding dress because not only is Lorelai like Emily, but that's why Emily understands her so well. Mm-hmm. Because Emily understood early on the way you speak to Lorelai is you have to play against her. You have to be, you have to use a sort of psychology when you speak to her and you have to make it worth her while or she won't do it. And there was, she genuinely loved her. If she didn't, she wouldn't trick her into coming to Friday night dinners. She didn't love her daughter. She wouldn't want anything to do with her. Like Jason's parents. Right. Like, like Chris's parents. I mean, when Chris's parents showed up at that banquet and he's like, father, digger. (laughs) Like he's like, that was warm. So, You can say what you want about how Emily and Richard raised her, but she did come from a home that had actual genuine love and she understood that love and she understood that loyalty. Jason, Mm -hmm. when he did that, it just proved that what he was capable of. He's not capable of understanding what a love relationship looks like or even what love is really. Right. I don't think he ever gets past work and like. No. Those are the two things he could deal with. That's not the how, that's not the way he was raised. No. So it's not entirely his fault. Mm-mm. He was a little weird. <laughs> he was very weird. <laughs> a lot of weird. <laughs> I like when he's telling me, he's like, Cyrus, a little to the left. And Laura's like, what the hell good is that? It's like, what good is shake? <laughs> like, 
<laughs> well, you have a point. <laughs> Neither one of them serve a benefit. But one is way less weird. One allows you right. to interact with your dog and to <laughs> play with your dog. And the other is just showing their, your subser- you're the master over their subservient form. <laughs> That's, yeah. there's, that's the difference. Neither one of them are beneficial in terms of they can do anything, but yeah. one is master over servant and one is, I'm going to interact with you. <laughs> Gosh, he was so weird. Yeah. It's as cold as his concrete house. Yeah. <laughs> I was so glad when he went away. Oh, nothing in his house looked comfortable. No. Nothing. I like nothing. the TV. That bedroom looked pretty comfortable. <laughs> not his. His yeah, Lorelai's. <laughs> Even his just had one bed and a nightstand. Like Lorelai's was lush and opulent and bright. His room was du- that the room Lorelai stayed in that guest room was the only bright colored room in the house. Did you notice that? Oh, Everything yeah. else was dark rays or dark blues, except I, for the room Lorelai stayed in. It was white. It's yeah. it, it was just weird to me. I didn't. That's like Fifty Shades of Grey stuff to me. That's how, I guess that's how I see it. Mm-hmm. And just seeing that like in Gilmore Girls was just. I didn't feel comfortable with it. I didn't like it. (laughs) It bugged me. And I was actually, I wasn't, I totally didn't hate Jason until that part. Until like she went back and he wouldn't let her, it just, it rubbed me the wrong way. And nothing, I don't think anything would ever change my mind. He just, (laughs) He was never meant to remember him and not Alex. I'd rather flip it. I'd rather forget about Jason all the time. Well, Jason got right. more than three episodes. That's true. He got a lot more episodes. I think, again, too, like he wasn't meant to be a likable character, but he was also setting the stage, you know, for the Luke relationship that they've been working towards since episode one. So it's, I think that probably served its purpose in, okay, he's not the right one for her. And, you know, this was never uh, meant to be a relationship that she was supposed to pursue. She was doing it out of spite. And it's just one more way of, it, in other words, like one more stepping stone towards the end game that they were working towards, I think. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think too, that um, the way Jason handled her quirks he didn't understand her and he made no effort to. Mm-hmm. It, I think it was just disrespectful and I, I, it, just the way he was raised, he didn't respect her and he was never taught how to respect her. And, and I think she realized that, you know, she wanted someone who was gonna, gonna re- respect the relationship and he wasn't it. I mean, he was still very immature in certain ways. And like you said, he just, he, he didn't know how to have a proper mm-hmm. relationship because he never saw it in his parents and yeah. they they probably never saw it in their parents it was just very you know protocol and there was never and he was too mature to try to figure it out on his own mm-hmm. to be a good boyfriend or maybe eventually a good husband yeah I think I think though that the other thing he was looking for was and I think that's why he thought that he and Lorelai worked because one, he didn't change for Lorelai. Lorelai didn't change for him. So he thought, see, we work. Now they don't always change each other. But a good relationship allows you to grow together, not yeah. stay the same, not be right. stagnant. A good relationship allows growth. And for him, it's no, we work because we never had to change. We just always had to, we always, always had to be as we are. But there is a point that, like, when she was running late, it was that night after the weird sleeping thing. And he's like, she's like, breakfast to go. And she puts everything in a bag and puts, maple syrup on there and shakes it up and he's like what 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 are you doing (laughs) and he was just completely thrown that she was doing that he made no effort to understand it and then he just handed her a key like okay thank you and then walked out so there was no he never made an attempt to understand her quirk and i feel like lorelei did that lorelei even asked him questions like why do you have a dog that can do that why does that benefit you you can't keep a plant alive. Why can't you keep a plant alive? Like Lorelai questioned and wanted to know why he did his quirks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jason never attempted yeah. to know her quirks or understand them. It was, no, you're you. I'm me. We're good. We're cool. Right. That's yeah. not a partnership. Mm-hmm. It's not, that's not an Alex Lorelai relationship, which should be the standard <laughs> to all of her relationships. Well, it's it's funny been that a you- Luke and Lorelai relationship, <laughs> but it really wasn't. 
because you know the Yale going away to Yale breakfast that you know Rory created and Luke just made it for her and understood it. <laughs> We're talking about understanding weird breakfasts. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> We're like the also, one where Luke um, made Lorelai the Santa <laughs> hamburger. Yeah. I like when she's like. You made me a Santa burger. That's disgusting. <laughs> and then when he's when Rory came in and she's like, "We're not talking to Luke right now." No, I was gonna say, "Are we are we on Luke now? Can no. we just go ahead and we've moved on?" You <laughs> tricked me again. <laughs> oh, you love me. To be clear. I don't dislike Luke and I don't dislike Lorelai and Luke. Mm -hmm. I just okay. think her and Alex were a better match, better couple, better endgame. <laughs> Let's talk about Luke. I'll let you guys yeah. go first. I do <laughs> like Luke. So for you viewers who are listening to this, please do not try to find my address and stone it. I do <laughs> like Luke. Okay? <laughs> uh-huh. I will explain my part after these two ladies who will really love them together will tell you. <laughs> uh -oh. So go ahead. You guys say, you guys will be on the bit. spot. <laughs> okay, Amanda, you ready? It's our time. <laughs> no, you go first, Amanda. Hi, my name is Amanda. I like Luke. <laughs> Hi, Amanda. Hi. Hi, Amanda. <laughs> I think the first time we see him, we can tell obviously that he has feelings for her, right? When she comes in and she's like, please, Luke, please. And he knows yeah. her well enough to say, how many have you had today? <laughs> <laughs> so he clearly knows her. He clearly keeps tabs on her. They're clearly friends. They clearly get along. They're clearly, you, you know, that that's great. It's awesome. And yeah. I, I think that that is fun. I think that they're fun together. I think that um, you guys had brought up with Alex that Luke was... Uh, Helping her learn how to fish and all oh, bummer for the other guy. I wonder how much when Lorelai sent him packing to the cabin or to the to the woods without going with him, was he thinking she went fishing with Alex and asked me to teach her to go fishing with Alex, but she won't go with me. Oh yeah. Wow. So I mean, even Luke kind of gets it. Just just throwing that out there. Even Luke gets it. <laughs> but with that shows but, how I'm sorry, go ahead. I think in the very beginning that the Luke and Lorelai relationship was again a one-sided. Mm -hmm. I you mean the very beginning of the season or the very beginning when they started dating? No, the very beginning of the season. Like the very beginning of the show. There was kind of mm -hmm. like that friendship kind of banter back and forth. Yeah. I didn't really again, you know, you know, you never could tell that Lorelai had any kind of no. feelings for Luke until that hospital scene when he mm -hmm. takes her to the hospital and he stays there and she says you know you're good looking and then you know they get their little banter back and forth but that was like finally the first time you ever see Lorelai acknowledge that she <laughs> she has <laughs> even thinks Luke is handsome like she just but I feel like you always kind of saw those looks from Luke mm -hmm. and Absolutely. You know, he, you could tell he cared about Rory. You can tell he cared about Lorelai, mm -hmm. but again, it was that one-sided until that first time. Yeah. And then it, I think that's, I feel like that's when it started. I think that's when she actually acknowledged it. You know, uh, again, he loved her from the moment, you know, she walked in the very first time uh, into his diner. But I, I think she was just kind of like, you know, again, focused on Rory. I think. I don't know, maybe it was just me or maybe it was wishful thinking, but I did kind of see in Lorelai that, yeah, she did like him, but it was like, but that's not for now. Like she was putting on the back burner, on the side burner. She was focused on Rory, Shilton, getting that started. You know, mm -hmm. I think that she recognized that Luke liked her and I think she recognized that she liked him, but she wasn't going to act on it. And again, until that hospital scene. And I think that's when she started to open herself up to do it. Acknowledged that maybe I can reciprocate a little bit, even if it's not serious, but maybe I can somehow include him, you know, not just put him on the back burner because I'm focused on Rory, but you know, maybe he, I, I can, you know, view him as something that I can reciprocate 
and acknowledge that, hey, yeah, I do really like him, or at least acknowledge that, hey, he really does like me. I think that was when she kind of had that moment. But uh, honestly, I, I mean, and I love the scene when she's talking, 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 he's trying to get her to stop talking. And he's like, will you marry me? What? <laughs> <laughs> I think they already acknowledge and already understand that, hey, that they 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 view each other romantically you know he could have said something else he could have said uh there's a dinosaur out the window or you know anything else but you know he picked those words and she knew why he picked those words and and she got so serious like she acknowledged you know he if she didn't think of him that way or realize how much he you know felt about her she would have just started laughing or, or anything else but it was like what you know, like, wait, you know, they both just kind of had that moment of, wait, are you, are you serious? You know, <laughs> but like, it, it, it was almost feasible that at that point in their relationship, he would blurt out, will you marry me? And they would just run off and get married. <laughs> you know, <laughs> No, that wouldn't have happened. Exactly. <laughs> I disagree with a lot of that. Uh Oh, really? <laughs> you think so? I was very patiently waiting for you to finish so I could say that. Uh Oh, <laughs> but Amanda had the same views, so I. This is, I think that you can still admit someone is attractive, without wanting to be romantically linked to them. I think yeah. that Lorelai saw Luke's a good-looking guy because Luke is a good-looking guy. I mean, he's he's a good-looking dude, and I think that she saw the effect she had on him, and she liked the effect she had on him, like Lorelai mm -hmm. has with every other man who's ever been in her life, platonically or not. She has an effect on men and she enjoys that effect she has on men. I think oh, yeah. that's what it was. And I don't think it can be denied that Luke has feelings from her from the very first episode on. It's, it oh, cannot absolutely. be denied. He is, and it's yeah. not just that he's infatuated either because most of the things she does irritate the crap out of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so exactly. it's not infatuation. He genuinely is in love with her. And yes. I love yeah. that about Luke. Mm -hmm. I think Luke deserves better. Aww. That's why I don't like them together. Luke follows Lorelai's lead on everything. Not initially at first, but certainly from the moment they get back together on. Even when April comes in, he still kind of follows her lead on that stuff. Yes, there are some moments when he takes a stand, but for the most part, he follows Lorelai's lead. And I, 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 think, I don't think it's an equal partnership. I think it's more led by Lorelai. Lorelai wanted to stay in the house. Luke's like, fine, you know, we'll live in your house. We'll make it bigger. We'll do that. That's what you want. We'll do that. And a lot of Luke, because that's Luke doesn't need a lot. And he says that I don't, I don't need a lot. I mean, it's just me. I don't, I don't need a lot. I just need you, which is beautiful. And it's sentimental, but he neglects himself a lot. And so does Lorelai. And that's mm -hmm. why I, that's why I prefer Alex and her, because I feel like Lorelai neglects Luke a lot. I don't think she takes Luke's feelings into consideration enough. And I think that Luke loves her so deeply and so completely that he's like, you know what, if this is going to make you happy, I'm just going to, I'm just going to sacrifice and do it. He didn't want to marry her. I think he should have married her <laughs> by the way. I'm not saying you shouldn't have, but I think that that whole April, Anna, Luke, Lorelai mess was insane. <laughs> I did. Oh, I, side with, I did side with Lorelai then when she's like, y you got to figure out how she fits into our life. Not the other way around, which I a hundred percent agree with, but Luke did not want to do that. And so, but Lorelai did. And the, my, here's the thing though. Lorelai didn't want the kind of life at the kind of pace that Luke wanted it. So Luke adjusted and corrected course. I feel like, of course, I'm seeing mm -hmm. Amanda not and shake, shake her head. So I know she doesn't agree with me, but I <laughs> feel like if Luke were more able to go at his pace, their relationship would have looked a whole lot different. But I think Lorelai was con like, of course the camp scene can be taken as I, I pushed you out there because I didn't feel like you were getting enough. I felt like you weren't doing the things you wanted to do enough. Noble, but if she would have stopped and looked, Luke was doing what he wanted, which was to, and he said that, what I, I don't like these things, I don't enjoy them, but you do, so I go with you. Mm -hmm. What should have happened there instead of Lorelai pushing him out to go do his thing was let's together go do your thing. Yeah. So yeah, she does consider his feelings sure. in that sense of you're not doing what you want enough then go do it with him because what he wants is you. Do you want him? Because it seems like you still want it separate. Mm -hmm. And that's even in a year in the life, that, that's one of the disappointments for me because it felt like towards the end, I think, I, I think if season seven would have kept going, 
if, if of course if the paladinos came back to write season eight but if it were to keep going i think we would have seen that but i think because i think that he had actually realized then truly what he wanted i think he would have corrected course but even in the end of episode seven he says i just want to make you happy that's all he wants and then you see him kind of this sad sack in a year in the life and it was I hated what Luke's, I mean, I hated what Rory's character was too, but I hated what Luke was in a year in life because he was this guy who had no equal part in her life. And he even says it at one point, we never did because you never wanted him. That's why we never had kids. You didn't want him. I didn't say anything because I figured that's what you wanted. And even with, with April, it was, no, she's my kid. I will handle it. It was so separate, everything, because yeah. that's how Lorelai wanted it. I mean, when they're on, they're on. I like them together when they're on. When they're doing things together, I like them. But Lorelai yeah. makes him do things separately. She doesn't She doesn't go do the things he enjoys. She only has him do the things she enjoys. And then I you want to do that? Like, like, I said, like I said before, Lorelai is a very selfish person. Yes. <laughs> That's, I mean, she's selfish with Rory. She's selfish with herself. And she likes her and Rory's life. And she doesn't like change. Mm -hmm, and right. I think that's because, I mean- that's just how she is yeah mm -hmm. and i think luke knows her well enough and he knows that about her and he's okay with it i mean i don't feel like she should have to change herself for anybody he knows how she is and he still liked her he still wanted to be with her and i feel like anytime luke was with somebody else they didn't understand him and i feel like lorelei at least I don't, I don't even want to say Lorelai 100% understood Luke. I don't think anybody except Luke or maybe not even Luke under fully understood Luke, <laughs> but I feel like Lorelai understood Luke and could communicate and banter back and forth with a lot better than anybody else Luke ever dated in the show. I'd give you that. And I mean, I think I, I always, he was happy when he was with her. Mm-hmm. Not in your life, he wasn't. I, I think so. I think almost so. all of your life, he he spent it sad, almost the entire place. I think part of it was that he was. Uh, what I see from here in the life is it, it's trying to reconcile, you know, the the series with, uh, as you just mentioned a little while ago, if the Paladinos could have written season eight, it, you notice there's so many themes that they have to try to you know, weave together, if you will. So it's playing off of, you know, when Luke and Lorelai were having their problems and you almost have to put them back in that situation. You know, you leave off season six and all of the problems and everything that's in place in season six kind of have to reoccur in a year in the life just so that they can bring it back and finish the story the way they were going to, you know, uh, even the song now or never it's never or now when she's sitting there watching them perform the new song you know for the stars hollow musical and, and she's singing it's never or now and season six leave, six leaves off with you know it's you know now or never giving the ultimatum so and that's when she goes off and it, so I, I think that's why luke was you know not necessarily happy the entire time of a year in the life because they had to bring it back to that so they can come out of it. But also I, I there are some times where he's he's happy. I think when you first see them, you know, it, it's kind of like you're jumping into their life and it's just like, oh, you know, he's cooking dinner and you know, they're walking the dog and that sort of thing. And and I think he he is happy, but they kind of had to show the problem so that they can bring the reconciliation in. Um, but he even admits himself, and of course all of this is a year in the life, but you know, he even admits himself you know, this is all I've ever wanted. This right here, this is what makes me happy. And it, you stop and think about that because I realize, you know, Luke was just a simple guy and, and Lorelai was, you know, being selfish. And, and I understand what you're saying as far as like, you know, maybe they could have, you know, been a little less one-sided, but I think that just brings it back to Luke you know, again, from day one, the instant she came in looking for coffee, I mean, he was in love with her, like genuinely mm -hmm. in love with her the whole time. And he was willing to sacrifice everything and anything just to be with her, you know, and again, she, you know, can, can reciprocate and respecting that and being like, Hey, you know, 
they do you realize hey that he's willing to to be that you know make that big of a sacrifice for her you know she could reciprocate as well but i think that just speaks to luke's character that the depth of the love that he truly did have for her and you know how he he was just willing to put her first and, and put her needs first and he you know she acknowledged it too with the bedroom set <laughs> you know oh. he's doing all these things for me why can't i just give him this one thing like what's wrong with me why can't i just do that you know but he he was he was content he was happy as long as she was happy because it, it truly was true love between them and and like she said herself she's admitted on multiple occasions luke truly was the only man she ever loved you know and and maybe that's why she acted the way she did she didn't know how to be in a relationship with somebody that she truly loved she didn't know how to do that it was easy for her to do it with the others because it wasn't real this was different because it was luke and it was real so i don't know that's just my view on it <laughs> waiting for a man to talk <laughs> I agree with what she's saying. You know that you're going to be the one to have a comeback. I don't ever, not for even one single moment, <laughs> doubt how much Luke loves Lorelai. Not even for a second. Yeah, of course. What I don't I mean, like is how little she takes him into consideration. Luke takes her into consideration for every single thing he does. Right. That should be reciprocated. I agree. And it's not. Absolutely. That is no, why I. Not. That is why they're not my number one because with Alex. She did go do what he wanted to do, even though she didn't enjoy it. She did it. And she never went to one of Luke. And yeah, Luke was happy seeing her happy. But clearly, he wasn't happy with the way things were going, which is why they broke up the first time. Because he couldn't trust that she was not going to run off and do what her mom said. Because Lorelai wasn't, you know, they were always like kind of tiptoeing around things without ever getting to it. Because Luke was always afraid to upset her by bringing it up. And then she was afraid to upset his jealousy because she didn't want to bring it up. Because mm -hmm. I think, I, I, I really genuinely think Luke loved her more than she loved him. That's not to say Lorelai didn't love him, but I think Luke <laughs> loved her more. I think Luke loved her better. I don't think Absolutely. she loved him well, is my issue with it. It's, it's definitely not, it has nothing to do with Luke at all, because I love Luke. I think he's an awesome guy, but I don't think he was loved well. And I think that, I, I, I think that even that moment and I granted he was in an upset mood but we talked about with Alex or with Mac <laughs> I just called him Alex <laughs> with Max when he said no you need to think about someone other than yourself for a change we agreed mm -hmm. that was true even though it was angry even though he apologized right after it was truth and the reason he apologized is because he didn't want to offset or he didn't want to upset Lorelai that's why he apologized not because it wasn't true right. but because he didn't want to make her mad exactly. Luke, was, when she yeah, took the boat he said almost the same thing to her Mm -hmm. what she said i just didn't want you to regret it he's like no you thought about you and how you would react and what you would want and then he stormed mm -hmm. off and he came back and he apologized i don't think he apologized because he was wrong i think he apologized because he realized what he said was probably meanly said in the moment and he didn't want right. to upset her not exactly. because he was wrong yeah. but even luca more than one occasion points out to her e even in your life it's like we didn't have kids because you didn't want to have them it's not that i didn't want to have them you didn't want to have them so we didn't do it that's not mm -hmm. a partnership that's him loving her so completely that he has sacrificed everything he wanted for her. Yes, he agreed to do that. That was his choice. He did it willingly. I fully agree with that. He knew what he was doing when he got with Lorelai. I fully agree with that. I just wish Lorelai loved him better. Not that she, again, not that, that she didn't love him, but I wish that she loved him better and she didn't. Oh yeah. And I think, you know, she just, she, her relationships, I mean, that's what we're saying. It's, she's obviously we've talked about what five five relationships she's had now and it's crazy to see her just you know jump from one to the other and and not know how hey now to emily respond <laughs> <laughs> i think she just didn't know how to handle the fact that she truly loved luke and she just didn't know how to to respond how to reciprocate i mean you know she started her life at the age of 16 so she never had a chance to you know mature in her relationships and to understand like hey this is the one and look what he's doing for me and how much he loves me and she just didn't know how to respond to that I think yeah you know I, I do agree I mean Luke, Luke deserves so much you know and so you, you want to see him have that but I think you know it's sweet to see 
you know, how much she does care for Lorelai and put her first that, you know, it's, it's just to see her happy you, was enough for him. But at the same time, too, I think, you know, Lorelai probably wishes she knew how to reciprocate properly. You know, I don't know, maybe there's that part of her that's like, man, I wish I could be who I need to be in this relationship because Luke does mean that much to me. I just don't know how to express that, you know. I would, he- I know Luke says that, but I would hesitate to say that that's true. Because even if you take out season seven, which the Paladinos didn't write, mm-hmm. if he only wanted to make her happy, he would have married her even though April was in her life, his life, the way she was. He would have married her because that's what Lorelai was begging him to do. He could not commit to it until she left him. Only then when he realized she was gone, was he even willing to do it. And even then it was just a desperate attempt to keep her. It wasn't because he wanted to. And that would have ended up miserably, not just because she slept with Christopher, but because it wasn't the way either one of them wanted that to be, but she wanted to marry Luke. She even says, I, I picked you. I want to marry you. I, I, I picked you. And he's saying, I can't do this right now. And so she's like, I'm done. Granted, again, I side with Lorelai there. I think that Luke, Luke needed to figure out how April fit into their lives instead of the other way around. I, 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 I agree with that. I, I agree with Lorelai there. I think Luke handled that badly, but I think that Anna was putting a lot of pressure on Luke and he just went through this whole legal thing with Anna. That was in season seven, but still he, there was a lot of pressure from Anna and this kid was new in his life. And again, Luke did not handle that situation well, but no, he Lorelai should have known he's Luke. No way is he going to be able to handle a 13 yeah. year old popping up in his life suddenly. Well, yeah, he didn't even tell her. More I know he did not handle that well at all. But if we know. are gonna, you if we are gonna say, well, no, it's okay that they're together because he knew she was so selfish. Well, Laurel, I knew that's the kind of dude Luke was because there's no yeah. way he would have handled that rationally. <laughs> right, he handled yeah. it poorly just as much as she did not love him well. I think, in my opinion, I, oh, yeah. I agree. They both had their faults and mm-hmm. oh yeah problems, and I think I, I, I think that's kind of what makes me like him even more. Is that you kind of got that. I usually don't in shows. I usually don't like on again, off again relationships. <laughs> I don't. I don't like that playing around with. But something with Luke and Lorelai. I just feel like they got together when they should have gotten together. And they broke up when they should have broken up. And I feel like it just happened how it happened. I don't know. I like the story. I, I like the story. And I just, I don't like i don't want it to change <laughs> i don't want to change either. Either. I I too, like but... The show. <laughs> <laughs> but the other thing too is that um someone had said earlier that alex i wrote it down alex shows her um how much she could do this relation how much she could do the relationship thing how she could actually do it he did show her that by showing how you compromise and how you do each other's things so little i realized she could have a relationship but then she didn't follow that model right and still you do you i do me we'll we'll come together when we come together but there's also you're right no one should expect her to change but a relationship that's healthy has growth not change but growth to it luke did it for lorelei it was not luke's nature to go pick up that book on tape yeah (laughs) and talk to himself in a diner back to a tape (laughs) and read a book that wasn't his thing but he did no. it for Lorelai. When do we see an example of Lorelai doing that for Luke? The boat. Nope. <laughs> That's not, a, she went against what he wanted and did what she would want to do. That wasn't, that wasn't op- contrary to what she is. <laughs> and he says that to her. He's the one who says that. So where is an instance where, <laughs> where, where is an instance where Lorelai goes against her normal habit to do something for Luke. Let me get back to you. I'm gonna think. Yeah, give me one. I'm gonna find some. I will. You cannot give me one. <laughs> yes, I can. I will. But unless and, and, you know, unless you have a wild trip on a year in the life. But let's be honest, that was for Lorelai, not for Luke. Right. <laughs> oh yeah, that was for Lorelai, and it was weird. And, and you know, the other thing to bring up too is that when you, I don't remember which one you brought up, but when Luke, when she said, "Luke, will you marry me?" And um, it was because you had said it was because of how he was reacting to Rory. I disagree with that. I think he's always been that way with Rory. That's never been a surprise that he's always fought that oh. hard for Rory. Always, even when when Rory dropped out of Yale, I love that one. I, of course, this is after that. 
But I love that when Paris comes back, she's like, we should tie her up. He's like, yes, yes. Yep. She's like, Luke, I agree. What? my idea first. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do love how Luke cares for Rory. I'm not downgrading that. I but I that. think the reason that Lorelai proposed to him in that moment was because, and she even said it, I just needed to be happy right then. And she mm. realized that this man would do literally anything to make her happy. And she right. realized, okay, I want to be with him. He's going to make me happy because he wants to make me happy. And I don't think it was so much about how much he cared about Rory because he's always cared that much about always Rory, even about when they weren't together. I think mm. it was... I need to be happy right now. I'm really upset. My kid just left Yale. My kid just moved to my parents. But I got backstabbed by everybody. I'm upset. I just want to be happy. And this man will move heaven and earth to make it happen. So I want to, I want to marry him now. And I think that's as far as her thought process went. And Luke would, Luke would do anything to make her happy. I just don't think she would do the same for him. And but, I love how when she finally has that reconciliation with Emily, and I think maybe that was, you know, a lot of her baggage, a lot of her past emotional baggage she kept with, carried with her, you know, and, and then the symbolism of, again, I know that a lot of this happens in a year in a life, but I think it's because a lot of the storylines were, were trying to attempt, it was the Paladinos trying to reconcile, I think, a lot of the storyline, you know, it would have been great to have seen it happen in the original series, but, you know, I, I'm excited to see that they're able to actually have the opportunity to, to reconcile a lot of them, but, you know, when she's finishing, you know, the trip on the wild and she puts, you know, her literal baggage down and it says a sign free, you know, that was just a very obvious, you know, symbolism of, you know, she's yeah. laying down her bed and she's, she's finally free of it, and so when she finally has that reconciliation with, with Emily on the phone, and that's when, again, she goes back let's get married let's do this but I think this time it was a little bit more sincere because as she even mentioned herself I didn't want to get married because my mom got married and so I want to like again with the pop tarts with her hairstyle she wanted to do her things her way she didn't want to mm -hmm. do things Emily's way she wanted to do things Lorelai's way so once that she was able to lay that down and that didn't have to hinder her anymore she was free like hey I don't have to prove a point and be rebellious or defiant, you know, to try to be control of my life. My mom got married. If I want to get married, I don't have to deny myself of that now because, you know, I'm trying to, to rebel against her. And so she was finally free to be like, Hey, no, I don't, that does not have to hinder or stop the situation. Like we can actually get married now. Like I can move forward. You know, she had that peace. So whatever baggage that was, you know, interrupting the relationship, all these years prior you know she was finally free of it you know it, mm -hmm. she could finally sincerely want to marry him you know and, and he of course he was on he he was already a part of the he was a part of the relationship long before Lorelai was so he, he already you know yeah. he was ready yeah. <laughs> and I think that if they continued on with the year in the life and they did a second one I think we would see Lorelai begin to love him well yeah, because I agree with the end of a year in the life. Yeah. Because when she came back to Luke, that was the mo that was my favorite version of Lorelai that I have ever seen. That is yeah. the one redeeming thing I will say for me. I know a lot of people like you in life. I, I don't, and maybe it's because I, I know people are like, well, you can't count season seven. Paladinos didn't write it, but you know what? Listen, season seven is Gilmore Girls. I don't care what way you spin it. Yes, Paladinos didn't write it, but season seven is Gilmore Girls, and I take the it whole Gilmore Girls as a whole, and I yeah. don't like what they did, how they took, because they did exactly what you're saying, Bethany. They took all those things that they ended with in season six and put into your life. But we yeah. already had a whole other 24 episodes that were in there that we divested our life and time into that is still a part of Gilmore Girls for us. So it did, that's why it didn't make sense because the Paladinos didn't even watch season seven. They just- It was history repeating they literally itself. literally continued from season, well, it wasn't history repeating itself necessarily. They just continued from season six on because Amy right. even said she refused to watch season seven. So that's why there was such a disconnect. And that honest, that's the only reason I don't like it is because there's such a disconnect from the end of Gilmore yeah. Girls, which is the end of season seven onto a year in the life. That's why I don't like it. I'm sure that if all the seven year in life happened in season seven at the Paladinos order, I would like it better probably, but it was so far removed. However, the one redeeming thing for me was how Lorelai came back after that trip to Luke because she actually, you could actually see her free yes. and she actually showed like yeah. when they broke up the first time, she sat there and she, oh, that is the hardest scene for me to watch when they broke up the no. first time. Oh, I will sometimes when I want a good cry, I'll just turn into <laughs> that when she's lying in bed. So even thinking about it makes me emotional. Oh, uh oh, 
when she's lying in bed and she's saying, I lost him. I screwed it up. I, I, I ended it. I, it's, he's, he hates me. It's all over. You mm-hmm. see how much she loves him, but she just has never been able to do it well. So listeners right. hear that I do like Lorelai and Luke together. But as the season stands at in, from seasons one to seven and even a year in the life up until the very, very end of the fourth episode, Luke deserved better. Not because Lorelai sucks, but because Lorelai didn't <laughs> understand how to be in that. So I do yeah. like them together. I just thought there was a better alternative until the end of a year in the life. And then I guarantee you, if they come up with a second one, Luke and Lorelai would be like, yep, they're my number one. Because oh, yeah. She will be loving him the way he deserves to be loved. But I think that it was, it was so hard. So when she cried then, obviously it was a cry of desperation, but Luke never saw that. Luke right. only heard on the tape that she needed him and he came running. I don't he even listen to the whole tape. I think he just heard her say, please come. And he was like, all right, that's it. I'm there. I don't yeah. even think he listened to the whole thing. So he never mm-hmm. saw that side of her. When they broke up the second time, she went right to Christopher. So Luke is like, really? I'm that unimportant that she's going to go sleep with the first guy? So he never saw that side of her being broken over them being separate. He never mm-hmm. saw it. Until that moment when she came back from the wild and she actually let it all out for the very first time. Mm-hmm. And that was a moment where he stood up and he was going to fight for her. He was like, I'm not going to let this happen again. All the other times that this has happened, I've just let it go. No, not this time. And of course he, you know, didn't know that he had, didn't have a reason to fight that she wasn't leaving him after all. But I think it was kind of like, you know, all the cards are on the table and this is this. And, and Mm -hmm. so it was just so beautiful to see, like, finally no hindrances. It was just, that resolution that reconciliation you yeah which is really cool and i think too for me another part that bothered me about the relationship and regular syndication is when she could feel Luke pulling away and I, he wasn't even pulling away he was just oddly enough he was keeping his life separate from her life which is how she liked it <laughs> in <laughs> as it went on laurel i like to keep them separate and that's what he was doing he was keeping his life by his choice separate from her and she didn't like being left out of the choice process what did she do when he gets separate? She stopped speaking to him. She started hiding from him. She started running from him until she felt, okay, I'm ready to be seen again. Did Luke do that when he felt he was losing her? No, he fought back for her. Lorelai mm-hmm. never fought back for him. She disappeared until she was ready to come out and then gave him an ultimatum and said, all right, this or that, that, okay, I'm done. Bye-bye. And Luke, whenever she left, even, even that time, Luke showed up like, I have packed. Let's go. Let's go right now. Let's go alone. Let's, let's get out of here. Let's go get married. He still fought, but Lorelai never, he never saw her fight until that moment. I wish I Luke saw her fall apart. I think we would have seen an entirely yeah. different relationship from that point on if he saw her fall apart. I do too. That would have been awesome. Yeah. I'm mad she didn't show it to him. Because then, then I would have had the relationship I wanted. Oh. Yeah, I, I just. It wouldn't be the Gilmore Girls then. Right. I think that's what it is. It's like you have something seemingly perfect and oh man, something happens and if only that didn't happen if only this didn't happen you know and and i think that's yeah. just, just part of it because it's real life real life is not perfect and even though these cast of characters are, are larger than life and it, it's it's not meant to be a sci-fi show it's meant to be you know living people just living their lives and and things that occur that are good things are bad and and man i wish things had gone a different way and and wow this is really awesome i'm glad it went this way and and you know life in the world is just not perfect and i think that's Mm -hmm. just all part of it you know you you, in the first time i saw the show and the first time luke and laurel i got together i was like finally you know and and i was like i'm waiting for the other shoe to drop you know because it was so perfect you know, and you just knew that another she was going to drop and I had no idea how, <laughs> you know, and I was really hoping it wouldn't, you know, but then, then when you see it happen and, you know, but then af- after it all, it's like, I kind of felt like Luke did when he was making the speech to her, you know, I had to watch, you, we, you know, I had to see you mm-hmm. go, you know, I had you watch Christopher, you went through Max, you know, and he mentioned Rachel and he, you know, he mentioned Nicole and, and now finally here they are. So I felt like, woof, the same way, like you, you climbed a mountain. Yeah. And yeah. finally, we reached the mountaintop and, and we can have, you know, we fought the good fight and now yeah. we're here and breathe and relish in this reward of, you know, there's, there's nothing standing between us anymore, you know, and I like the way he's like, just so you know, you're not getting out of this unless you're in a body bag, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, finally, 
<laughs> you finally get to see Luke and Lorelai married and, and it's sad that it had to take it so long. I mean, I would yeah. have loved to have seen it happen in the original series. I would have loved to have had episodes afterwards. I want to see Luke and Lorelai's happily ever after, but they got there. For Luke and Lorelai, I just think that, and, and it could be that, you know, Lorelai didn't understand it until your life. And it could be that the Paladinos would have changed that in season seven. Could be. But we cannot change what Gilmore Girls is as it stands. As it stands, okay. seasons one through seven, Luke deserved better. As it stands, A Year in the Life, episodes one through three and a half, Luke <laughs> deserved better. But A Year in the Life, second half of episode four, Luke and Lorelai were exactly as they needed to be. Right. She finally had that freedom. And that was, that's awesome to see that happen. So, and maybe if yeah. Alex was in the picture longer, Lorelai would have come to that realization sooner. And then Luke and her could have been as they were in your life. Yeah, that would have been awesome if she had just, you know, let go and let herself have some healing sooner. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, again, that that's just part of the storyline and showing how people are imperfect. They, they, they do, they should work and they should be end game. Lorelai just should have been better sooner. Aww. Yeah. So we can all agree that Luke is just absolutely awesome and amazing. So you know. I love Luke. I, so I, it, Luke, I, I've never, ever, ever not loved Luke. Oh yeah. I just, I like Luke more than I like Lorelai. <laughs> Shoot, I think that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> and I liked Alex as much as I liked Lorelai. So they worked together. See, does that make everyone feel better? Yay. I like Luke more than Lorelai. And that's why I like Alex and Lorelai together better because they matched better because I like them equally. <laughs> Not to say I don't love Lorelai either. I just, as Lorelai and Luke, I love Luke better. Luke better. Exactly. <laughs> I think we can all agree with that. <laughs> and of course, Christopher and Lorelai get married, which Ouch. didn't make any sense Ugh. whatsoever. Yeah. That was just like a year of my life that was hard to watch. <laughs> it was. The only reason they got married was because Lorelai had finally gotten to a place where she was ready for marriage and Chris mm-hmm. was there. Right. I think she was just going through the motions on that one. Again, that's what we, we were noticing. It's like, how can you be so invested in the relationship with Luke? And then boom, suddenly you're jumping to Christopher and becoming his wife and, and, and acting as if he was the only one for her. Of course, they have a history, but it was just so crazy to see her move from one to another so fast and just so one, two, you know? And, and again, yeah. I think because he was going through the motions, it was filling a void. It wasn't real. And I think she wanted it to be real. I think she, in her mind, pretended it was, but the whole time, again, the only man she ever really loved was Luke. Mm-hmm. And she made herself believe that she loved Christopher and this was okay. But deep down, I think she knew that she just loved Luke and whatever was going on with Christopher was just not real it was just on the surface it was practical actions it wasn't it wasn't real it wasn't what she had with luke and what she wanted with luke well much like when she proposed to luke the whole reason she went to christopher is because she just wanted to feel happy and i don't think christopher made her feel happy but i think if you've ever been through a trauma and i'm not saying that her leaving luke was a trauma but it felt like a trauma to me um because i was so invested in it but i think that what was happiness to her at that moment was forgetting and numbing out. And I think that's what Christopher always, always has been for her Mm -hmm. was forgetting and numbing out. I mean, when she got upset with her parents, they went out on her balcony at her parents' house. It every single time that's all he ever was. Oh yeah. And, and I think that in that moment she went to him because he was her safety net as he always has been. She knew just like she knew Max was there. She knew he was there and she knew that he was available. So it's okay. This is the first thing that's going to make me forget. I don't care about how it's going to affect Chris. I don't care about what it's going to do to him. I'm going to go to him and it's, I'm going to forget. And that's all I'm going to care about. And then when Chris wouldn't leave her alone, Rory was right to be upset about that because I don't think Chris ever loved Lorelai, but he was certainly thought she was the one because that was the only relationship he he ever had that felt like home. Yeah. Right. And so it was comfortable. Exactly. And so Rory was rightly upset that, did you not even consider him at all? Did you not consider me in this at all? And even when they were when they were married, Rory treated Christopher like he was a child. Mm-hmm. She didn't tell him when Rory was upset about the marriage. She didn't explain why. She went to Rory to plead, please don't be mad. Please don't be mad. And Rory was like, well, I, of course I'm mad. 
And she, even Rory treated her dad like a kid. She was mad at Lorelai, not at Chris. Because yeah. she understood what Chris was and she understood what her mom was doing. Right. Mm-hmm. So the whole Chris marriage thing was just, it was never going to be good. It just, yeah. no. from the start was just like, what are you doing? And it was I think- like a- coping mechanism that just was never meant to be used and crisp was just crisp crisp was just grasping at any source of stability and he felt that's what Lorelai was to him Mm -hmm. yeah and even when they sat there crying on the couch was the most much oh my gosh when he did not go to the hospital when her dad was sick oh what is wrong with you and then they get mad at luke for being a friend and showing up when she showed up to the hospital when his daughter was sick and chris was okay with that but you don't show up and someone shows up unannounced to help your map. Yeah. So when well, they sat there on that couch and Chris was saying, it's not enough, is it? He mm. knew, he knew he was never enough. He knew it. No, yeah. He, he wanted did. the rich life that his family had. Lorelai didn't want that. Lorelai wanted the quiet life. She wanted yep. the stars, hollow life. And Chris was never going to be good at that. No. I think they just both pretended that it it could work. They were fooling themselves and they knew they were fooling themselves, mm-hmm. but they just wished that it could be that way. But it it, 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 it was never going to work. You could only keep that facade for a short time. And then you had to realize, whoops, this is not it. Yeah. And I think, honestly, I think Lorelai would have kept it going as long as she possibly could. I think Chris yeah. was always going to have to be the one to end it. Right. Yeah. Because Lorelai's that stubborn of no. I, this is what I chose. So this is it. That's what she's always been when she left home. No, I chose this. So I'm not going back for help. Right. Mm-hmm. That would have been her and Chris doing it would have been a miserable 30 years. Yeah. And, and the way he mentioned too, like when they were in the kitchen after he took Rory out to dinner and Rory had just explained the whole Twilight Zone episode that she and Logan had seen where Logan had, uh, where Logan gave Rory the rocket in the Twilight Zone episode about you know, the two that waited 80 years or 40 years for each other. Mm -hmm. And right after that, Christopher said, you know, I'd wait for you till I was 80. And, and, and so in Lorelai's mind, she just heard that story. So that's true love. So she's tricking herself into thinking, wow, if that's true love, and this is what Christopher saying to me, then, you know, this is true love, Mm -hmm. but then he ends up changing it. Well, I know I said, I'd wait for you, but now I can't, you know, so even that in and of itself, it's kind of like, he's admitting if waiting for her is true love, then he's admitting the opposite of that, you know? And, and it's, it was just uh, one more way. I think that they both were just wanting it to be right, but all along knowing it wasn't. Yeah. I think too, that Sheila saw Luke is like, Chris is always a safety net. We talked about that. I think she saw Luke as no longer an option in any capacity. Right. So if she had to be with someone again, why not be with the one who loves yeah. me? Right. Mm-hmm. and she was like i said she was ready to be married and she thought luke was no longer ever going to be an option ever again they weren't even speaking yeah right. so i think that that's why i think that's one of the reasons she married chris as well i'm ready to get married i want to be married i want to start a bigger family i want to do all the things luke is no longer ever going to be an option for me so i'm just going to settle and be with the one who loves me if i can't be if i can't love them then at least they love me and i'll be sort of happy right all right. Do we have anything else that we want to say? I think we cover pretty extensively. We've been here for now. You viewers will not know this because I'm going to edit it, make it nice and listenable for you. But we have been talking for two and a half hours. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so actually a little more than that. Two hours and 45 minutes. Oh, wow. So I think that's all we're going to say. I don't even think I'm going to ask if you guys want. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, yeah, I think we're done. I think we've covered it as more in depth than we have in any other episode, even the Lorelai Rory episode. <laughs> So if you guys have questions or if you think we missed something or maybe we missed an honorable mention, maybe you think that I'm insane for going against the grain and being my own self, <laughs> then feel free to reach out to us. We have an email. It's familyfanclub2021 at gmail.com. You can yell at me on our Facebook group, Gilmore Girls, Gilmore Family Fan Club. You can yell at me on Twitter or Instagram because I'm sure that I'm the only one you're going to yell at here. So feel free to lash out at me. I'm okay. I can take it. I'm a big girl. You can and that's Maureen. <laughs> you yell at her. <laughs> no, I wasn't going to say which one it was, Amanda. <laughs> but you can reach out to me or any of the other people on this podcast. That's fine too. Um, and ask them what they're doing with me on Twitter, on Instagram, and on TikTok. All the, nope. 
TikTok is the name of the application. Again, we've been here for two hours and four. Like TikTok matter. <laughs> All these mistakes are being kept in. So Fancy fresh. Again, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Look for family fan or Facebook family fan clubs. You'll find us there. You can find any of those avenues to reach out to us. Again, remember our code word. I'm not going to tell you what it is because we said it 5,000 times somewhere in this podcast that you're just going to oh, yes. go through and find. Mm. Go to our family fan page, which is for this podcast. It's Fandom Family Chat. It's a page on Facebook. Go there. August 30th, we'll have information on how to get us the code words. Also check in the groups. We'll have information there. Yep. If you can't figure out how to get a hold of us now, I don't know how to help you. Oh, so I think, sorry. I think that you will just have to wait till another podcast and hear it all over again. Mm-hmm. And on that note, we are going to get ourselves to bed. I think probably we're probably all going to yes. go to sleep because we're moms and uh, well, and some of us have jobs early in the morning. So yes, <laughs> we will see you guys in a week. Tune in Sunday. We have another episode coming at you next Wednesday, another episode coming at you. And tomorrow night, we have a special interview with Rini Bell, who is Lulu. Ooh. You will see that come out tomorrow night. Watch out for that. Six o'clock Central Time, Thursday. That's all we've got. So we'll see you guys tomorrow and Sunday. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.